And so let's talk about, you have this passion for winemaking on this hand, and then you are a well-renowned pediatric surgeon on this hand, and you've basically been able to kind of really bring those two worlds together to create a really phenomenal outreach. Tell me a little bit more about how that came to be. Well, we, um, he has been doing surgical outreaches since even before we were married. In 84, um, he was going to places in Central and South America to help um, little kids repairing cleft lip and cleft palate. And then um, he moved on and was doing more and more outreaches and really needed more funding to help we're finding these kids that can't even afford to get the transportation to the hospital. So we wanted to um, find ways of making money to help support that. We, we've loved food and wine, had it in our backyard and just started um, making the wine and decided this would be a great combination to make yeah. this fabulous wine to support an incredible cause. And you donate 100% of the profits 100%. directly back. Sometimes Actually, more. we should say more. <laughs> sure. yeah. Well, yeah, all your We time. don't get paid. Right. Yeah. Someday, That's Karen. Incredible. Someday. <laughs> the pie in the yeah. sky. Someday you'll get paid. Yeah. No, uh, but I mean, talk about good karma. Goodness, you're yes. racking it up there. You have traveled to how many countries to perform these surgeries? Well, I've done over 40 missions. I have to count countries, maybe 10 different countries, something like that. And, you know. and how do you identify um, your patients there? How, how does it all come so together? Those are great questions. In order to do a third world mission, you, it isn't just surgeons. Mm -hmm. You have to have a whole team that comes, anesthesiologists and nurses and things. And then on the ground, you have to have a group you work with. And usually it's an NGO, non-government organization, that works on the ground to recruit patients and to figure out housing and all those kinds of things because you can't do it by yourself. Uh, and it's really important to have a good group. So like when we do an, a new place, uh, we will often send a scouting team there ahead of time. We sent a scouting team to Peru last year to check out if this would be a good long-term place for us to be. And they still went with like 16 people, but not 30 some people to do some small surgeries to see if that's a good choice because you need to, you don't want to put all these resources and not be able to help the most amount of people at the end. Um, it could yeah. also help to be affiliated with UC Davis, once again, right. a world-renowned medical Absolutely. hospital system. And um, it puts his name out there and the research he's done and everything, he, he's, he's well known. And so when people, other people outside of us, you know, um, realize that there's a need mm -hmm. in a certain country, they also give us, a, give us the heads up. And Right. So when you come into a country, you were saying earlier that you have how many days are you there usually? So usually we, we've done different things. The model we're doing most commonly now is you have a what we call a week of work. So you screen patients on a weekend, you operate Monday through Friday, you do some sort of follow up over the weekend and then you, you're out. Um, now that being said, you have to have people on the ground that will take care of patients that need help afterwards. You can't just operate and leave. So part of our NGO process is to work with local doctors, um, to help you with follow-up and the ideal thing is to train local doctors so mm -hmm. it isn't just give a man a fish mm -hmm. it's you teach him how to, how fish. to fish. Teach him how to fish. Right. right. But that's mm -hmm. harder. It, you know it sounds really simple. It's no. not so simple. No. I can imagine. Um, Lots of politics and... Right. Yeah, in those countries if they take care of the patients we take care of then they don't get paid either. And so that's... Right. It's a, I, the governments there do not take care of, the, of the, this population of patients. So when you're there and you're operating, you're, you mentioned earlier most of your other surgeons who are working are people that you have trained. Uh -huh. So you're doing, you said four surgeries at once? In Typi terms of four tables yes. going at once? Uh -huh. Wow. And typically, different than the U.S., in only two rooms. So in each room you have two anesthesiologists, two operating oh tables, and all the nurses. It's all very crowded, but it works. It right. works. Yeah. <laughs> and how many patients do you typically see in that week? Well, you'll see, you, on the screening day, you'll see maybe 200, but you only operate on somewhere around 80, maybe up to 100, depends on, on the week. Uh, and so so there, the ideal thing is you don't want too many patients that are disappointed. And then you have to, you could be in charge, and it's a terrible job to say, this child gets surgery and this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you don't want to have that but very there much. There is a screening. I mean, if a child is sick, if they're right. running a fever, um, also, the beauty of doing cleft lip repair is that it, it's it's a 
not an easy surgery, but it's not as invasive that you have to worry so much about a child when you're leaving, you know. Right. No, we are lucky that a way. Week after. That the children, in general, by the time we leave, are doing pretty well. Right. And uh, yet, it's changed their lives. Well, that's what I was going to say. By the time you're there and you leave at the end of the week, you've changed 80 to 100 right. children's lives and their families' lives. Right. Because and I, if I you mean, look even for the right. big picture, it's that whole, they're now a member of society that right. can contribute. And you have three trips planned I do. We're going, this year? We're going alone? to Myanmar, okay. which was, was Burma, and I don't know why they changed it, but now it's called Myanmar. Okay. And um, then we're going to the Philippines to Cebu and to the Philippines to another island called Bahol. And so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a busy year of, of surgical missions. Yeah, but so well worth it. Right. And, and I love that you have figured out a way to kind of bring your two passions together.